Good morning. On the seventh Sunday after Trinity, the readings are Mark 6, 14-29 and Ephesians 1, 3-14. What has it been said about an in inheritance? It only comes to a person through the death of a testator. The words, last will and testament, refer to the document that is drawn up to declare how a person's earthly goods are to be disposed of after their death. The words will and testament have other meanings too, will referring to desire and testament to covenant. In biblical terms then, we find God's desire and his covenant with his people as primary definitions of these words. What's in a word? Well, we have to use words in order to communicate. We speak and make our intentions and our thoughts and wishes known in conversation and through written sentences. It is not true that in the common proverb, sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but words can never hurt me. Words can hurt and tear a person down, as well as, thankfully, heal and build them up. The power of words is quite evident in the passage from Mark's Gospel for today. John the Baptist was executed because of words rashly spoken by King Herod and other words coming from his wife Herodias through her daughter. John had got himself into trouble because he had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. It was all a bit of a mess. Although Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, his rash promise turned the tables rather dramatically, and John was executed. Paired with this story, we have the letter to the Ephesians chapter 1. It begins with a greeting in the traditional style, and then a prayer of thanksgiving by way of introduction. What follows resembles a homily about an adoption as children of God through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of God's will. It is through the obedience of Christ even to death on a cross that this has come about. For we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will. Jesus' death happened as part of God's plan of salvation for humankind, so that they can indeed obtain an inheritance to the praise of his glory. The beheading of John the Baptist seems to be at odds with God's meticulous planning of our redemption. It looks more like a casual, almost accidental event as the result of some unfortunate mistake. But it also brings home to us the risk of speaking out against su such things as immorality and selfishness. Let us not forget, though, that God speaks judgment over these things. He does vindicate his people, even if we don't see it happen straight away. Within a decade, Herod had been banished and left to die disgraced. John the Baptist, however, had his story written up by Mark and Matthew and Luke, and he is honoured as a strong and fearless witness to the kingdom of God. Our inheritance, then, as followers of Christ and therefore children of God, is secure. As Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, in him, Christ, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Words have great power, especially when God speaks them according to his will and testament. May we truly hear and rejoice. Amen.